Hey, this is a quick uh, video tutorial on kind of a specific problem. It's if you have made or you have somewhere a synthesizer that's uh, only you know mono, you can only play one note at a time, um, and you want it to be polyphonic. Uh, to give an example, this is a synthesizer, a preset I made kind of. <laughs> Kind of sounds bad when I'm trying to change because I can only play you know one note at a time. So if I try to hit two, it just messes up. Um, and if I put it in poly, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's horrible. Um, so this is really no good to me at all. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually record a MIDI, change it to audio, split up the audio, put it in a sampler, and effectively. Um, have the same instrument or a very at least a very re very similar sound but in a polyphonic setting so I'll show you quickly how to do that um, I'm only going to do you know like one octave so we can just for time's sake so first you gotta record it and you can skip ahead if you want a little bit Okay, I'm actually just going to do five notes. Um, you're going to want to kind of hold them out long because once you get them into the sampler, um, the total duration of the note you, is something you cannot change really. You can decrease or increase the uh, R, the, like the ADSR envelope, um, the release, sorry. You can increase the release a lot so that it just sounds more paddish, but that's not really quite what you're looking for. If, if it, something like this has a quick cutoff, you know, it's there and it's gone. So you're going to want to hold it out for five, six seconds or so, you know, maybe longer. Um, so now once we've got this, we're going to bounce regions um, into a new track, and we're going to mute the other one. So now we've got this nice audio track here of the five notes. Um, so I'm just going C through G. This is C3 to G3. Um, so now what we have to do, this is kind of, it's tedious. I'll be honest with you, it's ridiculously tedious. Um, we have to come in here and click before the waveform. You don't want to click after the waveform. If you have a little bit of noise in here, um, that's just going to be a little bit of kind of a, a latency between you when you hit and when you hit the sample because it's going to get rid of that. So we're going to split by playhead, get rid of this silence. Um, zoom back out, go into another one. We just got to have to split up these five audio files. Um, now, Logic does come with a feature. Um, like if, if we were to right click and go to convert and convert to new sampler track however um, it's going to do it by transient markers and if we go back well I'm going to cancel because that's not what we're going to do if you go back and look at this there's a lot of transients in there um, if you decide to do something you know this kind of synthesizer sound um, and do it that way basically what you're going to get is you know, six to ten different MIDI notes um, on your sampler that are dedicated basically to little segments and chunks of a single note. So it's really quite useless. Um, it's good for, you know, percussion hits or something where it's just like one attack and that's it's done and over with. But something sustained like this, it's uh, kind of just got to go ahead and do it yourself. And let's see, there should be one more. Okay, so now that we have these five audio samples, um, and of course if you were going to do your entire keyboard, you would do more, but I'm just going to show you kind of a quick way to do it. We're going to create um, our sampler now, the ESX24, put it in stereo, and once we're here, we're going to go over here to the edit, click edit, and we're going to highlight the regions that we've cut up, the different samples, and literally drag them into here, and um, put it on contigu or contiguous zones, um, starting at C3. Uh, went too far. Um, and still we're going to have to do a little bit of a thing, because what it does is it spreads out these samples all the way across the entire keyboard. So come open this up wide. We're going to reduce all of these down to just one note width. Uh. 
So they're all just on that C, or the negative 2C. And we're going to move it all up to C3. And then we literally have to move each one to, the, to D, to E, to F, and to G. Um, now that we've got that, we have to come up here and put C3 and then change this to D3, E3, F3, and G3. Otherwise, the, the note that it thinks it's playing is going to be different, so it's going to try to modify itself and it's going to sound bad. So this is what we have so far. You can always play it poly you know, polyphonically. Um, however, like C sharp, or actually all the sharps in between are not covered, so we can go back um, and cover it, or you can, you know, record it chromatically, um, whatever you'd like. That would give you a better quality. Um, okay, so basically that's that's one way to do it. Um, you can also, the, the, if you notice, if we well. Hold on, we're just going to cancel this, close it. If you go back to the original sound, there's all that reverb and kind of like delay and stuff in the background. Where's this? It's very dull. It doesn't have any of that stuff. So you kind of have to go back and remake the effects on the sound again. And then you'll, you should get something similar. It's a little quieter. Um, due to that quietness, we could um, highlight all these regions. Just change the volume up, you know, to 10 or so. Okay, that works pretty well. Um, also something you can do, you can uh, highlight all the, or go to groups, new group, drag all the zones into a group, um, and then you can tweak all of them at once if you click up here at groups, and then you know, toggle back and forth between groups and zones. Um, we can change the polyphony, you don't want it one because, and that's the problem you're trying to get away from to begin with, but if you want to put it on a lower polyph or polyphonic setting, it can sometimes increase the quality of the, the playback. Um, Another thing to note is sometimes just raising up the the release a little bit keeps it from having that like ridiculously quick cutoff that comes with a sampler sometimes. And then let's go back to the original again. It's gonna be a little louder, but well, that's right. We can't play it two notes at once, or three. Um, so that's just a good way to uh, basically make a, a monophonic sound polyphonic. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope this helps. Uh, have fun.